What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today, we are going to talk about what I think is the best budget-friendly, low-power variable optic. It is from Primary Arms, and it is the SLX 1-8 second focal plane with the ACSS reticle. Before we get into the reticle, we do have a sponsor of the video. You guys have heard me talk about Prime Armor before. They are sponsoring this video, so thank you to them. They make some very nice plate carriers. They have a bunch of different body armor as well. Level three, four, side plates, etc., etc. Um, gun control is on the rise again. Lots of states are banning body armor, so if you have the disposable income to get yourself some body armor, I highly recommend it. There is a link and a discount code down in the video description. If you want to pick anything up from Prime Armor, use that discount code. Hook me up. Hook yourself up. There you go, there you go. Okay, these optics are not new. I am very, very familiar with them. I used to own a one to six. We had several one to sixes and one to eights at my previous employer. And where I work now at Roscoe Manufacturing, we have a couple of the one to eights as well. So I am familiar with these and I have God knows how many rounds through a rifle with this optic attached. So we're gonna start at the back and work our way forward just because it's what I like to do. <laughs> On the back, like most power low power variable optics, you would do have a diopter, and this has a very generous range um, for pretty much any eyesight out there. What a diopter does is it focuses the reticle, focuses the optic to your eyesight. So you just spin one way or the other until it's crisp and clear and works perfect for your eyesight. And this diopter is very, very generous. It does come with a set of lens caps, but who cares? I don't use lens, cap, lens caps. Magnification ring, again, this is a one to eight, so it goes from one all the way around to eight. Um, it's a tiny bit stiff. Now, most people are probably gonna like this. I like it a little, little bit easier. You're not gonna bump it accidentally, but man, I think 99% of you are gonna disagree with me, but I wish it was a little bit easier to, to swing back and forth. Uh, the windage and elevation uh, adjustments are A-OK, -okay, no issues there. One of them has a spot for an extra battery, a CR2032. And then they are half uh, MOA adjustments per click. They are very, they are very tactile, they are very audible. Primary arms did a great, great job. No issues with that. The knob on the other side is a, a dual purpose knob. One is your battery. Like I said, it is a CR2032 battery, which is great because they're very easy to get. Uh, that, that knob is also your illumination settings. It does go all the way up to 11. Um, I've heard other people say it's daylight bright. I don't think it's quite daylight bright. I mean, it is close. It is the closest optic without quite being there ever. I mean, really, really close. But on a super sunny day, especially I think if you're in the desert or snow, if you guys don't know when it's a lot of snow and the sun's out, that washes out a lot of reticles on it. Super, super bright. So I think it's really, really close, not quite daylight bright. But for me, this has an etched reticle. For you boys and girls who don't know what that means, the reticle is etched onto the glass and you can see it, unlike a red dot, you can see it without the uh, optic being turned on. So I don't turn the optic on unless I'm in low light conditions where I can't quite see that etched reticle. So with all that said about daylight bright, I don't really care if it's daylight bright because I don't use it. Um, my only, again, small nitpicky con, and I know this is a sub $400 optic, is I do really, really like that in between the different uh, brightness settings when there's an off setting. So one, off, two, off, three, off, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I could change anything about the scope, the optic, that would be the only thing I would change. Besides that, it is fantastic. Now, before we get into the reticle, because that's probably my favorite part of this optic, um, I want to talk about second focal plane compared to first focal plane real quick for you boys and girls who don't know what that means. Second focal plane means in simple, simple terms is that any of the ranging features that we're going to go over, any of the bullet drop compensating features that we're going to go over only work when the optic is on eight times or their max magnification. Magnification's all the way up. First focal plane, that's not the case. It works on any magnification. So. That's one of the reasons second focal planes are less expensive. They're typically a little lighter as well, not always. But yeah, that is the difference. All right, let's get into this reticle. I'm gonna break out my phone here and I'm gonna cheat a little bit. You have the big donut of death. You put that on your target. You let loose when you're very, very close up. Underneath that, you have a Chevron. The Chevron 
is not only a bullet drop compensator, which we'll get into in a second, it's also great for very, very precise hits. You use that tip of that chevron if you're reaching out a little further and you need to be very, very precise. Again, also in mid to close range that you can put that chevron right on your target and let loose as well if you're close enough, that will work fine. Now, as far as your ranging features, you have two different types of ranging features. The first one is uh, all the lines right under the tree, right under the uh, donut of death there. If you look across the orange line, Line going from one end of the donut to the other that is representative of an average person an average man who's going to be a roughly 18 inches apart so if they're standing facing you or laying down and prone from one donut to the other side of the donut if their shoulders line up they're roughly 200 yards away the next down uh, line down which is right under the chevron they're 300 yards four five six seven eight all the way down okay next ranging is off to the right here that bottom line is where you put the uh, bad guy's feet Wherever his head lines up um, on the four, uh, that, uh, sorry, <laughs> assuming he's around five foot ten, uh, wherever his head lines up, that's how far away he is. You know, 400, 500, 6, 7, 800 yards away, and the ranging is very, very simple, easy. Again, that's why I love the ACS reticles. Now, deep breath. Almost, almost through it. Bullet drop compensator that's built into it as well. The top of that chevron, again, it may be a little different for different calibers because this is a multi-caliber optic. This goes 556, uh, 308, and 545. But the tip of that chevron is going to be 100 yards. The bottom of the chevron is uh, 200 yards. And as again, you see it goes 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 100 yards away. There's also some holdoffs for windage. If you look on that tree again, those little dots are going to assume you have a 5 mile an hour wind. Might be tough to get a perfect five mile an hour win, but it gives you a reference and, and, a, and an idea of where you can hold. Now, the writing you see in green is going to be on the top. You see the 8.6 mile an hour moving target. The average man uh, in shape in the military uh, running with a rifle is gonna be roughly 8.6 miles per hour. So if that person is running, you would put that dot on the person, whichever way they're running, and that should get you close to a holdover uh, to be able to get hits on target. Uh, the 3.1 mile an hour is going to be if they're walking. Same idea, the average uh, in shape 20 year old male carrying a rifle walking is about 3.1 mile an hour. You put that donut of death on the outside, the outside ring of them there, and if everything goes well and you know what you're doing and you have a bit of skills, you should be able to get hits on target. All right, I want to talk about the eye relief, eye box, and glass clarity all together because they're all the same explanation. I went through the reticle really, really quickly now that I'm thinking of it, but um, it's a very basic but still very useful reticle. If you get one of these, the manual will break it down in a little bit more detail, but it, it really is that, that simple. All right. And once again, keeping in mind this is a sub $400 optic, uh, the glass clarity is really, really good for the money. Now, don't start comparing it to uh, uh, Vortex Razor, uh, Kales, whatever you say it, Swarovski. It's not a two, three thousand dollar scope. It's a sub $400 scope. So the eye relief, three and a half inches, it's pretty generous for a low power variable optic of that price. Um, you really can't go wrong, especially with Primary Arms lifetime warranty. They have a very, very generous lifetime warranty. It's right up there with Vortex. All right, dimensions, price, weight, 16 ounces for one to eight. That is a very, very good deal. And again, the MSRP is $389.99, but I have seen it go on sale many times over the years. So um, if you keep your eyes open, you can definitely pick them up for less. Just don't skimp on the mount. Make sure you get a very, very good mount. Reptilla is one of my favorites. This is from American Defense Manufacturing and everything American that I've used from American Defense Manufacturing is solid. Their upper to hand guard lockups, their optics, just they're, they're they're pretty affordable, but they're very, like, like Prime Armor, pretty affordable, but very, very solid products. Anyway, pros, we're already at that point of the videos. Uh, all primary arms optics give you a very, very good value. I think it's a very durable optic, especially again for the money. I love the one to eight compared to that one to six, that extra two times for me and my terrible eye set makes a really big difference. I can easily get 200 yards with a one to six, but when I try to go past that, yes, my eyes are that bad. I really struggle and having that extra 2% uh, magnification makes a big difference. I am gonna throw in there the reticle one more time. I know I've said it several times and it's no surprise, but I love, love, love all ACSS reticles, whatever it is. 
They're very, very easy for me to figure out in my mind and they're very, very useful and I just, I think they're the best reticle on the market. As far as cons, I know it's a nitpicky con, but I would love to see the in, in between off positions on the illumination dial. I know it's a budget optic. I know it's been out for several years. I'm gonna guess when Primary Arms comes out with a new gen, that's one of the few changes they'll make, but I really think that's, it's nice to be able to just a quick turn either way to get your optic on. Overall, if you are on a budget, I prefer this over any other uh, low power variable optics sub $500. The Vortex budget stuff is okay. Swamp Fox type stuff is good. Uh, but the combination, like I said, of the durability and the lifetime warranty and the quality you get, and again, that uh, that reticle for the money makes the primary arms my personal favorite. I have a Swamp Fox. I've owned Vortex. They're not bad at all. But um, if I had to go with one optic, this would be the one I would go with. It's a good do it all, jack of all trades type optic as well. What I mean by that, if you only want one optic for the range, uh, for home defense, maybe some competitions, uh, whatever, anything like that, this can fill all of those roles where the one time is generous enough. It's not quite as good as the one to six, but it's good enough for close up and quick shots. And then if you need to stretch out and reach out a little further, even patrol, this would be a great patrol optic as well. And not every department has uh, <laughs> $2,000 to spend on an optic or no department does. This would be a great optic uh, for any of those uses. All right, you cannot go yet because I wanna remind you uh, about Prime Armor and sponsoring the video. Their support is great. They're the only armor company I use. Discount code and uh, link is down in the video description. There will be some affiliate links down there as well. If you want to get one of these, please hook me up. If you think I deserve it, hook me up. Use those affiliate links. I also wanna let you know I am of course on Facebook and Instagram because I haven't got kicked off yet. There's still time. The links to both of those are down in the video description. If you want to know what I'm reviewing right now in real time before the reviews come out on YouTube, I'd love for you to follow me on both Facebook and on Instagram. More important than any of that. Hey, I did this in one take. No mistakes, no pauses, no nothing. Solid. More important. Thank you guys and girls for watching. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Again, if you think I deserve it, that like button and that comment helps out more than you can even imagine more important than that if you subscribe to the channel and maybe enable the bell notifications all jokes aside that stuff truly helps me out my goal is to make this my full-time gig and it's probably going to take another three to five years but that is my goal so please subscribe to the channel enable the bell notifications and be good have a good day all that stuff i'll <laughs> see you guys later peace